some praise this morning because he woke us up this morning and he blessed us to see a mighty, mighty new day. How many of you know that we serve a mighty God? We serve an awesome, mighty God. No matter what the situation or the time or the test, we serve a mighty God. So we're going to sing what a mighty God we serve and we want all of you to worship with us. Amen? Amen. 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 this morning. I've been through a lot, but God is good and he's faithful to keep his promises. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through. Ha, we just 
just want to say thank you, Lord. Amen.
<laughs> so we say thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, to continue to be in our presence, Father God. We lift up everything this morning, Father God, because we came in with some baggage, Father God, but we leave it at the door this morning, God, and we trust you, Father God, with all our heart, spirit, and mind, spirit of the living God, fall fresh on each and every one of us and each and every one of our situations. Father God, we love you, we praise you, and we give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name that we say thank you, Lord. Amen. Him is number 211, leaning on the everlasting arm. Amen. All verses. Shannon Young, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Amen? Amen. Then we'll follow by our selection by the Mass Choir. Good morning, church family. We enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise this morning because God is good. And he has been good to each one of us, amen? 
Let's give him the praise, saints. Let's give him the praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, this morning, God, to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to each one of us. Thank you for loving us with an unconditional love. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us and to reconcile us back to you. We thank you, Jesus. You are the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. You are our Savior. And we say thank you. Thank you because of what you did for each one of us. You took on our penalties for our sins and gave us your righteousness. You reconciled us back to God. So now we are children of the Most High. And we say thank you, Jesus. We can't thank you enough. We thank you, God and Jesus, for sending and sealing us with your Holy Spirit. For you sent us another helper, a counselor. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us and for interceding for us. We thank you, Lord, for all of your promises. God, we thank you that you are a faithful God and you have promised to never leave or forsake us. Lord, thank you for seeing us no matter where we are, God. Thank you that you take care of us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there's nothing that you don't know about each one of us, Lord. You even know the number of hairs that are on our head. God, we say thank you for loving us anyway, God. Thank you for maturing us. Thank you, Lord, for our church and our church family, God. Thank you, Lord, that we care, we love for, for each other, Lord, just like you love us. Thank you for giving us hearts of forgiveness, God, just like you forgave us, God. We thank you, Lord, that we are your family. We are a family here, and we are here to build God's kingdom, that he is the head of this church. And we say thank you, Lord, that we serve you with gladness in all that we do, in all that we say, God. Let us honor you always, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a thirst to know you better, to study your word, Lord, to come and worship on Sundays with each other, Lord, to help build your kingdom, God. We thank you, Lord, that you have called each one of us, Lord, to this church, God. And that you, God, have a purpose and an assignment for us. And our answer to you, God, is yes and amen. Yes and amen for calling us, for loving us. Lord, thank you for watching over us each and every day. For you woke us up this morning, God, with new mercies. And your mercies are new every day, God. And you loaded us with benefits for this day that you've already gone ahead of us, Lord, and made our path straight. God, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we lift up, Lord, all those among us that are sick right now, God. Mm. And we add Muriel's father to that list, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for, for healing, God, for all those that are among us that are sick, God. For we know that you have authority over all sickness and disease, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you know all that is going on in this world, God all the wickedness, all the violence, Lord, all the destruction, God. And you are in control of it all, God. And we thank you, Lord, for protecting us, Lord, for encamping your angels over us, God. We thank you, Lord, for watching over our families, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all of our blessings, for surely, God, it is you that puts food on our tables each and every day, God. You have given us a place to live, God. We have so many reasons. So many reasons to say thank you, Lord, each and every day, no matter what we're going through, God. Mm. No matter what trial we are in right now, God, you said, Lord, that you would never leave us or forsake us, God. You said, Lord, you would bring us through. We know, God, you are faithful and all-powerful. You are a miracle worker, God. When we can't figure it out, God, you've already done it for us, God. Let us always trust and believe that you are working things together for our good, Lord. You know all about each one of us, God. You know our hearts, Lord. You know, God, what concerns us. And you said, Lord, that you would perfect that which concerns us, Lord. So we cast it all in your hands right now, God. All of us that are among us, Lord, that are bereaved, God. 
that have sorrow and pain in our hearts, Lord. We pray, Lord, for comfort, that your Holy Spirit comforts us and gives us peace, Lord. For all of those among us, Lord, that are dealing with financial lack right now, God. Mm. This world, it costs so much food, Lord, rents, God. Mm. But you, God, you, God, said that you would supply all our needs according to your riches and glory in Jesus Christ. So we look to you for what cometh our help, for our help cometh from the Lord. And all we have to do is call upon you, Lord, and you will answer, God. Thank you for loving us so much that you answer and you stand ready when we call, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you watch over God. Each one of us watch over our pastor, Lord, while he's on vacation, Lord. Continue to strengthen him and give him wisdom, Lord, to lead us, Lord. For you have sent him here, Lord, to, to lead us, to teach us, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord, for him, Lord. We know, God, that you are in control of every situation, Lord. Renew our hearts, God. Renew our spirits, God. Give us strength where we're weak, God. You said, Lord, if we lack wisdom, then to ask. So we ask for wisdom today, Lord. We want to build your church to the church that you are pleased with, God. We want, Lord, to live in a manner that's pleasing to you, God, in all that we do, in all that we say, God. Not just on Sundays, Lord, but we need you on our jobs, God. We need you in our homes, Lord. We need you, God. Each and every second, Lord, of each day, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you are so near to us, God. And that, yes, Lord, you bless us each and every day, Lord. And when we call upon you, even though we're in those storms, God, and sometimes they seem to last for so long, God, but you give us peace, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord, for the peace that surpasses all understanding, God. Thank you, Lord, that we can just reach out and touch you, Lord. That you always hear our prayers, Lord. And that you're even answering some of them while we're still speaking. God, we say thank you, Lord, for loving us so much. For caring about each one of us so much. That you bless us each and every day, God. And we say thank you right now, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for taking such good care of us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for holding our hand. And let us always remember that our hand is in your righteous right hand. Let us walk by faith and not by sight, Lord. Trusting, believing, and having all confidence in you, God, that you are working things together for our good, Lord. It is in Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Thy will be done. Amen, amen, amen.
much to thank God for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. At this time, I want to welcome all visitors on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Preston Thompson, Jr. We want to just say welcome to each and every one of you. If we have any visitors here today, please stand. I see my brother. Hey. <laughs> what a surprise. Hey, hey. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Do we have any other visitors? Amen. Well, you know how we do at Ebenezer. We just send some love to the back, to the front, to the left, to the right, up in the balcony. To our, music, to our AV ministry and Brother Raymond and Brother Charles, to our illustrious musicians, amen, amen, to our choir, amen, to our ushers, and if you have any love, just give me a little bit, please, to our deacons and to me, thank you, Lord, thank God for each and every one of you this morning. And right now, we're going to have our announcements by our own sister, Sabrina Wooten, followed by our another sermonic selection. Amen. Good morning, church. Can you hear me? Okay. These are announcements for the coming week. Reminder, please silence all cell phones during the service. Thank you. Church office hours are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. As it is our custom, during the summer months, please feel free to dress down during morning service. We will study the word of God individually for the month of August and resume the Word on Wednesday Bible study on September 11th at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. All members are encouraged to attend. Join the men's ministry every Friday at 7 p.m. as they gather to study the Word of God and fellowship at the church. Anyone that may be interested in learning Spanish, please sign up with Sister Phyllis in the church office. We would like to assess the interest before we organize a class. Pastor Thompson will be preaching a one-day revival on Thursday, September 12, 2024, at Shallow AMZ AME Zion Church, 129 William Street, Inglewood. All church members and congregation are asked to attend. We will celebrate the seventh anniversary of Pastor and People on September 22, 2024. The theme is partner, partnering with the good work for the good work of the gospel. Philippians chapter one, verses three to six. Guest preacher from the for the 1015 a.m. morning service will be Pastor John Gooden Sr. of Repair Center Ministries of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The guest preacher for our 4 p.m. service will be Bishop Millicent Hunter of the Cathedral Baptist Virtue Center of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Let us come together and celebrate God's goodness and grace for these seven years. Save the date. The Fellowship of Black Churches of Hackensack and Vicinities is hosting their annual Pastors and Leadership Conference on Saturday, October 12, 2024, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Mount Olive Baptist Church in Hackensack. Guest presenters include Maria, Reverend Maria Compton, Reverend Dr. Le Lester Taylor, Jr., Dr. Danielle Brown, and Reverend Dr. Jerry Carter, Carter Jr. Registration is $40. They are requesting that we register as soon as possible so they can see the interest. Every member should have received a text message with the flyer. If you did not receive it, please see Pastor Thompson to register. If anyone is interested in organizing a youth ministry on coordinating children's church, please submit your name to the church office. Our 2024 theme is, we focus, we commit, we build, and rejoice, which is in Ezra chapter 3, verses 8 to 13. Thank you. Amen.
don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't Don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting yeah, yeah. on the Lord. I don't. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind.
about you, but I don't mind waiting. Because his word said that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. I thank God today to stand before you this morning with a word from God. And I have to admit it was a struggle. <laughs> because there were so many symbolic uh, things that came out of this scripture that it was amazing how God just does things, how he works through the word, how he works through the word, not me, but him. So this morning, I'm going to do the best I can, and I know that I thank God because I know that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide me to what it is that he wants me to say, not what I want to say, because what I want to say, it wouldn't matter, but what he says it's throughout eternity, so I thank God for that. Please turn with me to Luke 15. We're going to read from the first through the eighth through the tenth verse. Amen. Luke 15, King James Version. The first through the fifteenth to the tenth verse. When you have it, please stand. If you don't, as we say, hold on. <laughs> then near drew unto him all the publicans and sinners for, for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Then he spake this parable unto them. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what, a man, either what women having ten pieces of silver, <clears throat> if she loses one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over the sinners that repent. And then it goes on, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, give me the portions of goods that fall to me. And he divided them for his living. And we all know the story of that, so we're going to end right there. But what I want to focus on is verses 8 through 10. 8 through 10, the parable of the lost coin. Three parables. Three parables that Jesus gave us. One, the public and the sinners. Two, the hundred sheep. 10 pieces of silver and the prodigal son. All these parables are reclaiming the laws. But today I want to focus on the woman with the 10 pieces of silver and one lost coin. You see, we all have experienced something very valuable or important. And only after an extensive search, we find it and are relieved that we have done so. I know most of us can recall a time when our parents lost something and it was difficult to locate. Maybe it was wedged in between something or rolled under the bed or refrigerator or some other strange location. But once they spotted it, they would say, bring me the room. And if I had to put a title on this, my title would be, get out your room and start sweeping. You see, that phrase signifies that they were going to do extensive work to locate and free that particular item. If it meant lifting, 
bending, rearranging, pulling, whatever it took to find to, or reclaim that missing item, so be it. Think about it this way. Imagine what it would feel like to lose the setting of your favorite ring, or better yet, a family jewel. You would go to any length to find it, wouldn't you? That's the same here. In our text today, we learn of a woman who lost a coin, not just any coin, but a coin that has significance or special meaning to her. She had 10 silver coins, but now one seems to be missing. She seems distraught, and she begins to diligently seek or search for that lost coin. If we were looking at the text from a literal perspective, we would conclude that that coin was something that she cherished and valued. The reason being, the coin may have been given to her as part of a wedding dowry or gift. It meant a lot to her, and to lose it was devastating. But it wasn't just any coin, because the scripture says it was a silver coin. And I pondered that for a minute. Now, why would he just say a scripture, you know, coin? Why didn't he say bronze? Why didn't he say gold? But he said, he said silver. Why silver? Because silver was believed to have the power to provide spiritual protection, to purify, and to cleanse negative energy. So if you look at this from a scriptural perspective, God is telling us something, follow me. But in this particular case, the coin, metaphorically speaking, represents the sinner who is lost and out of the will of God and his protection. You see, God protects us. And that's what that silver coin represented, that protection. One who was once, once had a relationship with God is now a backslider or one who doesn't know him at all. And I found that strange. I said, Lord, you know, this is interesting. You took a coin, a silver coin, to symbolically represent your protection. And I said, Lord, that's amazing. You see, God wants a relationship with each and every one of us. And the sinner is now not under the protection of God, but now he's become a target for the enemy. But because God has a deep love for us, an unconditional agape love that never changes, he sends someone to look for those who were lost. We are his brides and he is the bridegroom. He adores us and cares for us. And to lose even one of us breaks his heart. But what I love about this scripture is, you see, the woman didn't just stand by wringing her hands and crying and accusing everyone of stealing her coin. She took action. She used active faith. She got excited. She took the initiative to bring that lost soul back to God, to reclaim what rightfully belonged to God, because his word declares the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God will wait. He is willing to wait patiently for all of us. Even when we do wrong, God is going to send out a search party to bring us back to him. Because we mean so much to him. And because of that, he's long suffering. He won't lose his patience. He won't accuse us like most of us will do. He won't accuse us. He won't look back on what we did. He says, come on back. I love you. I need you. I want you. So what did she do? First, she lit a lamp. She activated and showed her faith. As I said before, she didn't wring her hands. She showed and activated her faith. What did she do? She lit a lamp. The lamp from the light represented the spiritual presence of God, his holiness, goodness, his grace, hope, and divine revelations. In other words, 
God was showing this woman how to come out of her despair. Accessing what was already in her, she used the power of God to lead her to the path of righteousness. This light illuminated the path to the kingdom of God and reminded her that she was a kingdom builder. She wasn't afraid but understood that she was not about to let this sinner, this coin, remain in darkness, in sin or despair, but would follow what God wanted her to do. Fear and doubt had no place in her mind. She was bold, getting ready to help the one in darkness receive the truth. As Malachi 3.1 puts it, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? So what did she do? She lit a lamp. She got into his presence. She got into his holiness. She knew that there was mercy and grace in God and that he wouldn't condemn her. She, he wouldn't condemn her, but he had to prepare her. Secondly, she began to sweep. Now, I thought this was strange. I'm like, why would he put this in the Sweep. Sweep what? Sweep the house. What house? Herself. You see, many times we read scripture, we can read it over and over again, but there is divine revelation in the scripture. It said that she began to sweep her house. She didn't start looking at the coin or the sinner. She looked inwardly to herself. What am I doing? Let me start with me first. I can't point that finger at you. I have to start with me first. You see, because sweeping the house is associated with cleansing, purification, and renewal. It's a forceful action. She began to prepare herself for the work of the Lord. Cleansing her own house, repenting, putting things in order. She was restoring her soul. She was removing impurities, sin, negative energy from her life to make room for God's grace and blessings. Where? She had to prepare because she didn't know where God was going to put her or where she was going to find the lost coin. You see, we have to understand the where and the mindset behind the change. And I thought that it blew my mind. Because I said to myself, she's sweeping the house. Not the literal house, but herself. You see, because God may put us in a situation where we have to go or may have been in the bar, in the club, wherever it is. He may put us back there, but in order for us to witness and to revolve others, reclaim others, we have to prepare, prepare ourselves. You see, we have to have that mindset change. We have to renew our minds. We have to be prayed up. In order to do God's work, you have to be prayed up because the devil is busy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So while you think you're all prayed up, He's already has a plan. He's already set out that diary. He already knows what he's going to do. And he's going to come hook or crook to implement his plans. So she knew that. She knew that she had to sweep herself first. Prepare herself for spiritual warfare. Now you say, well, what's this? you know, Reverend Fogo, that's, that's kind of strange. You know, why couldn't she just sweep and get it all done with praying, hallelujah, you know, praise the Lord and all that. Because there was an urgency in that. She wasn't unproductive. She was attentive and had a sense of urgency, which allowed her to respond to God's calling by preparing herself first to follow the fulfillment of God's plans to rescue and bring back that which is lost. Amen. Preparation was the key. And you have to understand, God will send us some places that we don't want to go. Lord knows he sent us to places maybe you're on the train and, you know, you're on the bus or somewhere. And all of a sudden, God will say, go speak to that person. Who, me, God? Uh-uh, that person's acting up. God said, yes, you. 
I've prepared you already to do what you're supposed to do. I will speak for you. All you have to do is to be obedient. But you see, you have to understand too, there is, there's a spirit world. There's a spirit world. And his demons are also aware of what God is doing. Because remember, Satan comes before God as well, seeking whom he can still kill and destroy. So he too knows the plans. But see, God has already prepared us to do his work, to do the will of God. We are mighty warriors in God. We are children, kingdom buildings of God, joint heirs with him. And nothing can snatch us out of his, uh, out of his hand. Now, I thought about that. I said, searching. Okay, that's good. All right, you're going to search for something. All right, I'm going to move this and I'm going to move that. She searched boldly and fearlessly. She started to look for something. Now, mind you, she didn't know where she was going to find it. She didn't know the location, the environment, or anything. All she knows is that it was somewhere. Get that, somewhere. She has questions, I'm sure. She wasn't ashamed. She had a sincere desire to seek God, to examine, and to study the possibilities of her situation. She humbled herself and prayed. She gave the situation over to God and believed without a doubt that she would find the coin, that God would lead her to the person that she was supposed to witness to. So there was a process. She had to be in tune with her surroundings and concentrate on hearing the voice of God because he says, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger we will, or he or she will not follow. I'm paraphrasing. If you notice, it said she searched carefully. She didn't make any hasty decisions. She wasn't doing it in her own will, but she was doing it by the will of God. She was waiting, hearing, believing, and never doubting. It's like us Christians. This is what we should do when we lead others to Christ. Seek the Lord's presence and his strength. You see, he wants that relationship with us, but we know that disobedience breaks us apart from him. When God puts something or someone on your mind, act. It's not by coincidence. He's calling you to search for that coin. He's calling you to call someone out of darkness, to reclaim his child, his one and only, not one and only, but his heir to the throne that none of us should perish. But we know that disobedience breaks us apart from him. But he wants us to crave for him. He wants us to have that desire for him, to humble ourselves and be patient and wait on him. And, he do, and he'll do the rest. He gives us a specific assignment. How do I know that? Because in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 11, it says, so neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters has one purpose. So we all have a purpose. And they will each be rewarding according to their own labor. So in other words, there are times when God will send you to witness to someone. And they may not accept God at that point, but what you're doing is you're planting the seed. So don't always think that, you know, when you have an idea and you, you bring that idea to someone and they take the idea and as we say, run with it, that they're stealing from you. No, they're not. You planted the seed. Now God uses someone to water the seed. And then after they water the seed, God does the rest. He does the rest for us. He will bring about, he will bring about the manifestation of his word and his promises. And he will do what he has promised to do. He'll do all that we ask of him. So what did she do? She lit a lamp. She began to sweep. She searched. But then she found a lost coin. When she finds the lost coin, she activates her faith again. What did she do? She calls her friends and neighbors together. She tells them, rejoice, rejoice with me. I found my lost coin. She didn't keep it to herself. That's called witnessing. She followed his instructions by doing 
and not just saying words, not, oh, yeah, I'm going to pray, and Lord, you know, this and that. She didn't do that. She told others, tell somebody. Tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Because that's what James said. He said, um, faith without works is dead. She went to work. She told somebody, just as Jesus tells us to go and tell others, because we are kingdom builders, and as such, he sends us as laborers into the harvest. She worshiped the Lord and gave thanks and showed gratitude for what God had done. And she invited others to rejoice with us. Testimony, your testimony means a lot because it can save others. You may think you are by yourself. You may think that you're going through something, but you have to share it with the believer so that they can pray over you, set themselves in agreement with you that God will do what he says he will do because he's not lack in his promises, but he promises to do what he says he would do. So you can't be like when you go through something, no matter what it is, it may be something shameful, something that you don't want to share, but you know what? That's the enemy keeping you from giving glory to God. Did you ever think about that? Mm, I ain't going to tell that. Mm, I was with so-and-so last night, and mm, I did this last night. Mm. But you know what? Someone would, might say to you, you know what? I was bothered by that same thing whatever it may be, but God delivered me. You see that? We are strengthened by others' testimonies. We have to give thanks and thanksgiving to a God that we serve, a God who's faithful in all things. Don't be ashamed to testify. You know, the, the, the song says, I, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Don't keep it to yourself because you strengthen your brethren by telling what you've gone through because they too can be strengthened. You know, there, there's a time when we were down to our last and by faith we took that last and we gave it to God. Amen. And what did God do? He multiplied it. But how could he multiply it if you didn't tell somebody that you were in lack? Because you see, God can raise up somebody who will give out of their abundance but how will they know that's what that we should do with that lost coin? We should, like the lamb, begin to sweep, search, so that they too can come back to the Lord. Because Jesus reminds us that there is rejoicing in the, in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who comes back, who repents, God and his angels rejoice over one. Think about that. One lost sheep. Could you imagine if all of us focused on one person? Mm. Witness to that person because Psalms 19 and 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language. They're where their voice is not heard. The angels, the angels, God's chosen. They are the ones who's rejoicing when someone comes back. Do you realize how special, how special you are to God? He says there's no speech. Like they're going wild up there. They're going crazy partying. Oh, he's back, he's back, he's back. That's what we should think about. Not that, oh, I'm going to witness and bring him to God. No, I brought him back. Here he is, God, I present him before you. You're long-suffering, God. He knows what happened, or she knows what happened. But God, here they are confessing, confessing their sins to you. That's right. Because he said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just enough to forgive us our sins and to save us from all unrighteousness. So just know that when you repent and come back, the heavens are rejoicing. She lit a lamp. She swept. She searched, she found, and she told others. Saints of God, I invite you to get out your brooms and begin to sweep. Let's reclaim or take back what the enemy has stolen from us. 
Let's go through the city sweeping, through the state and through the country. We all have lost coins in our family, in our circle of friends. Maybe a brother, maybe a sister, maybe a cousin, niece, or nephew. So what are we going to do about it? How do we reclaim what has been lost? We don't have to be complacent any longer. We have to persistently seek out those who do not or once had a relationship with God. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He told us that we are mighty warriors, kingdom builders, joint heirs with Christ, co-workers with Christ. So let's begin to call others to repentance, beginning with ourselves. Let's sweep in our homes. Let's light that candle. Let's sweep on our jobs. Let's sweep and search in the grocery store. Let's sweep and search in our playgrounds. Let's uh, sweep and search in our schools, in the prison, in government. This is not just a job for some. It's a job for all of us. Now, this is what blew my mind. I was, I was studying. And God said, well, are you going to tell them about the nine? I said, what? He said, the nine. He said, one was already saved. He said, you went after the one, lost one. But what happened to the nine? I said, wow, that's deep, God. You see, you have to I said, God, what do you mean the nine? He said, what about my righteous people? That's the nine. That's us doing the work of the Lord, witnessing and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nine. Nine represents being spiritually completed in God's grace and mercy. That's us. Nine, prepare to do or be a vessel of honor for the Lord. Nine, being completed in the Lord. We are his vessels of honor and used to bring others into the kingdom of God. Nine, spiritually enlightened with the truth, knowing our scriptures, meditating on our scriptures, meditating on our word, bringing forth the word of God, believing that he can do anything but fail. Nine, high consciousness. We have discernment because we listen and obey. Nine, because we're selfless. We're not keeping this to ourselves, but we're gathered here together, getting ready to spread the gospel through all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We have compassion because we are the nine. We are the righteous, and each and every one of us, if we do the will of God, we will be complete in the grace of God, and in the fullness of the power of God. This woman was being prepared to be a vessel of honor before being divinely completed by God. After she reached maturity, you see what happened? See, that's why she was sweeping the house. He matures us. She was changed. She was morphed into something new to be used by God. And then God added, add one more, ten, the number of completion, perfection, and divine order. That's what our God does. And I'm going to leave you with this. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Saints of God, get out your rooms and let's go sweep it. God bless you all. We all have a responsibility to bring others to Christ. And I know that sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's you know, we don't want to do it. Ooh, I don't want others to know I'm a Christian. But you know what? They already know. Because there's a light. There's a light in you that shines so brightly. You don't have to tell somebody you're a Christian. Because it's already, all, it's all over you. It's all over you. So at this time, if there's anyone who wants to accept or come to Jesus, now is your time. Will there be one? there be one. You can come by letter, baptism, or Christian experience. The Lamb of God said, whosoever will, let him come. Yeah.
your broom like the candle search but once you find it I want you to rejoice because there's healing that has to take place and when the healing takes place when we purify ourselves Lord have mercy we're gonna have a good time here at Ebenezer amen amen God bless you God bless you at this time we're going to all take a part in the ministry by the ministry of giving thank you deacons um, we're going to have the ministry of giving. Um, do you want to walk around, Barbara? Um, the ministry of giving. Remember, you give what God has blessed you to give. You know, sometimes even a dollar, I've witnessed it, even a dollar. God has taken that dollar and he's multiplied it. You have to have faith the size of a mustard seed. Just understand, just the faith the size of a mustard seed. Don't say you don't have, guess what? You got a quarter? Watch God multiply that quarter. Do you have faith to believe it? You don't give because you wanted something back, but you're giving because you're honoring God because he's blessed you. He's provided for you. So at this time, we're going to have, um, we're going to stand. We're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're going to stand and we're going to walk around. Amen.
Father God, we just thank you for the offering, God. We know, Father God, that there are some who have given out a lack, but God, I promise that, and you promise, God, that you will provide all their needs according to their riches, according to your riches and glory. Father God, if they believe, you said they would receive whatever they ask for in prayer. We heard the prayer this morning at the altar, Father God, that said that some were lacking, but God, you hold the storehouse bounty. You own it, God. So we ask for a blessing right now. Bless this offering. Bless the people who gave and those who could not give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, say to God, it's time to leave, but we're never from his presence. I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for the worship experience. I thank God for the ability to present to you. I thank God for Pastor giving me the opportunity to uh, present and to just give what he gave to me. And I, I just thank God. I hope that you receive something from the uh, lesson. Let us all stand as we dismiss. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Go in peace.